And we're live. Since this thing pops up here. Hi guys. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Just gonna see if I can get this going on my little monitoring iPad here. I want to see your questions. Um, I'm new to this technology thing, I guess. Uh, it'll pop up, I'm sure. But uh, anyways, yeah. Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm going to talk about a little bit about ma basic mold design. Um, for those of you curious, this is just sort of what to expect when you're approaching uh, the mold idea that's in your head. Um, there's various ways to tackle uh, building mold, although uh, you know things are going to be specific to the board style that you want, and that's what I'm here to do today: is show you all the different board styles, uh, how a mold looks. What you can expect with, uh, you know, where to place your lines on a mold, and uh, it's just, you know, what, what a finished mold looks like. Uh, mostly, I'd like to be able to answer uh, questions for you guys, so uh, this should only take a good like ten minutes. Uh, at which point, I'm going to take questions and uh, see if we can tackle a bunch of stuff for another like five ten minutes. You guys have any questions about uh, simple mold design? Uh, you know, we're, we're happy to hear them. If uh, if it's something like how to build a mold, what measurements should you be using, um, that kind of thing, I can help you uh, privately afterwards. Uh, but we're not really going to get into that today. Uh, what we will do today is take a look at all the different molds we've got, and uh, just to compare, you know, we've got. Pre-shaped molds versus unshaped molds, but they're still all carved out. Um, we can talk about that. If you got any questions about the actual molds I'm holding up, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, let's see if we're going live here. Um, yeah. Mold making is uh, an interesting facet of skateboard building. It, uh, it can be as complicated or as simple as you want. Uh, what I love most about mold making, specifically the one side of foam molds that you would use with one of our thin air press kits, uh, is it's, it's just a piece of foam. Um, it's super easy to sand, it's super easy to scrape and carve. Um, you know, these days, uh, with as much practice as I've got, granted, it takes me 30 minutes to an hour to get something that's going on in here into a finished mold that I can press and put into a bag uh, that day. Uh, that's amazing. That's really, really cool. Uh, to do that kind of thing in an industrial setting, you might need a, a CNC machine. Um, you know, all kinds of, uh, like the technical bar can get pretty high uh, for mold design and making. Um, but uh, yeah, let's get right to it. I'm not going to get this live thing working because I'm new. Hey, there we go. Let's turn that down. Um, before I continue though, I should uh, introduce myself. My name is Marcel, uh, and uh, I'm gonna be talking with you today. Uh, behind the camera is Jonathan Nuss. He, okay, he's gonna leave this time, uh, but he's there. Um, if you guys have questions, <laughs> All right. So, let's start off. Um, I've got uh, five different molds in front of me uh, in various states of completion, uh, and it, it just depends on their purpose. Uh, you know, we've got like a simple entail going on here. I've got a street deck mold. I've got a little rocket, you know, a little mini cruiser there, and uh, I've got our old school shape. And, uh, you know, this should cover a good variety of the boards that you might want to tackle. It certainly covers all of the different facets of a mold that you're going to be playing around with when you design your own. Um, I forget to mention, but i got a nice drop deck mold right here, one inch drop. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about how we come up with these things. Um, let's start with the pintail. This is the easiest, most simple mold we've got, right? Tell it's just simple concave from front to back. Um, you know, this one's pre-shaped, but that's okay because we've got a, a blank one here. Now, if you're working with custom designs, you know, you're designing your own board, which is sort of what we're talking about here today, this is more like what your mold's gonna look like. It's just gonna be a, a blank, you know, square mold that you've carved out and shaped yourself. Uh, this one is good for a pintail, uh, but this sort of thing, you know, it's, it's just simple concave from front to back. You could use this for any kind of board from, uh, 
you know, a simple top mount board, a uh, little cruiser. You could make a, um, uh, what are those called? It's like a, a drop through deck, right? Uh, boards with shoulders and big long boards. Uh, we'll use a mold similar to this. Uh, and these are very, again, very simple, you know? Like I said, it's, there's, uh, what, three, four inches of flat space in the middle here. We've got, you know, a good four to five inches on either side of that for a concave. Just to make a nice, simple board. Fun board. Next, we've got, no, nope, jumping ahead here. Next, we've got the Little Rock. This is just a little mini cruiser. It's much like the Pintail in that it's got very simple concave from front to back. But this one's got a little extra element. It's got a kicktail to it. You can tell, like, you know, we've carved, carved the tail down there, and that will give you a nice little kick. Kicks are fun. Sure. Now let's get John to show you guys a little better what that's like. Yeah, look at that kicktail. Look at those. Look at that concave, those smooth, sleek curves. This is an uncut version. Um, it's, uh, it's similar, it's not the exact same board, uh, but uh, the lines do show kind of like how we approach uh, this sort of design. You know, again, we've got like simple concave on both sides here, right? And then our board flattens out, turns into a kicktail. Very simple, very simple. This is sort of an extension on that, right? This is our old school board. This one's got concave on both sides and kicktails on both sides. But you'll notice that the kicktail on one side is a little bit different because that's going to be the nose. It's going to be just a very little bit of meat on that nose versus the kick. This is sort of a, that's a fun little like, you know, cruise or pool deck. So it's also very simple. Um, it's got the kicktails. Uh, this is a street deck very similar to the old school that, uh, that we just showed you. The street deck is, uh, is an evolution, uh, you know, the, the following decade behind the old school board. Uh, that's what skateboards kind of ended up being as the science was worked out on flip tricks. Uh, and it, uh, I mean, it hasn't changed much in, in 20, 30 years because, uh, it, because it's just perfect for the task. Um, and finally, we have a drop deck. Now this thing looks bizarre compared to all the others that we're just looking at. Um, it's got an interesting little um, quirk to how a mold is designed for a drop deck. Uh, and that's just because of the nature of the beast. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, you can tell though, you know, I've got a platent underneath my foam mold. And this is just for uh, doing the truck mounts. Uh, you'll see in a second what uh, I'm getting at here. But uh, th this is essentially the, the spectrum of, of a mold that you're going to see. There's a couple extra features uh, that are out there, a little bit like advanced concave, uh, where, you know, the concave on a drop deck right by the wheel wells might wave a little bit. You might get things like gas pedals, uh, there's W concave, there's radial concave in a drop. All of these things are, are uh, you know, more advanced techniques for, for mold design. And there are things you can, you can learn and work out uh, and apply to your mold. Um, and it's just sort of, you know, all the extra stuff that can go into, uh, especially the longboarding world where, where design isn't really constrained by the science of flip tricks, for example. Um, you know, depending on the application, your, your drop deck ha might have different features of shape because you're going to be cruising with it, you're going to be sliding with it, maybe you're just going to go fast. Uh, but it's all there, uh, and it's all out there on the internet. Uh, looks like we got a question already. I press with a concrete mold. Is it different pressure? Concrete mold is... I mean, well, let's jump to the next thing then. Uh, you know, these are... The, windy day up there. Um, this is a one-sided foam mold. It's made of foam, but it doesn't have to be made of foam. What's important is that it's a male mold only. You don't need to do a female part of the mold. When you're doing a concrete press, typically that's what you're getting into. You're going to make it out of concrete because you do need uh, a rigid, solid structure to force the material into the shape uh, that you're going to want to build with. Um, but I mean, you can always make a one-sided mold out of concrete. You press that in the back. Wouldn't recommend it. It seems heavy. Um, we got any questions? No. All right. Let's keep going. Um, Let's talk about uh, the simple pintail. So, I already went through this uh, a little bit briefly. Uh, you know, there's flat space, there's some concave, uh, but you'll notice here I've got uh, 
I've got a uh, center line. And uh, when you're designing your mold, sort of the center line is going to be the most important part of the, the whole process. Uh, from this center line, um, you're going to be doing the physical concave shape. You're going to be placing your template on the final board. This is what you're going to use to place your trucks so that they're square to each other and your board functions properly. Any graphics that you want to do are going to be based off the center line. So when you're when you're doing your molds, you know, make sure that center line is the first thing you do at, at all times. Um, if you're doing a symmetrical board, you know, maybe something like a street deck, have have a second center line across, uh, and this will just help with every stage of the way. Uh, right, got a question. question about the pintail molds. Uh, will a pintail mold fit inside the 1447 size tap bag, <laughs> or will you custom size mold? or need a custom size mold? Yeah, uh, so that's a great question. Uh, that sort of goes into our products in specific. Um, the pre-shaped molds that I'm showing you here, the pigtail, tail, the street deck, the little rocket, this old school mold, um, these are all sized so that they fit in our 1447 bank. You'll notice the 1447 has a curved edge, or, or rather one of the ends is rounded, uh, and that's because we sort of use it to prevent people from doing custom work in it. Uh, the bag, is sized specifically for the pre-shaped stuff, um, and uh, we don't want people making the mistake of purchasing uncut material with the 1447 bag. Uh, I understand how on paper the 1447 bag might be able to fit some smaller dimensions, um, but you have to account for depth and on and on and on. Uh, we can go into that in another show. Um, so back to the molds. That was the pintail mold. Um, let's go to the uh, little rocket. Uh, this one's similar, it's got very simple concave, uh, but this one, we've got about two inches of flat space in the middle. Um, when you're designing your board, it's super, super important to make sure that you've got some flat space, or if you're doing a radial concave, where the concave just curves over the surface, um, either progressively or con uh, consistently, um, it's gotta be so mellow that it's not uncomfortable when you're standing on it. You gotta think, you know, you're, you're raising up these sides and you're gonna stand with your feet perpendicular to that. Uh, if it's too sharp, that's gonna hurt after a while. You're not gonna wanna ride your board very much. Um, so mellow is good, flat space is important. Um, and then from there you can always tailor it, you know, if, you, if it's not enough for you, uh, it's foam, so it's very easy to carve it out, make it a little sharper, uh, something to, more to your tastes. Um, with the old school board, it's very similar, except we've got two kicktails now and um, you'll notice here I'm gonna walk this one up to the camera you'll notice here that we've got some flat space right between where the kicktail happens and where the concave happens and that's because uh, the wood when you're pressing it can't make two bends at the same time or rather it can't do a bowl shape uh, when you are bending wood especially veneer uh, you want to make sure that you terminate a bend before you start a different bend. So you can see right here, right, we're bending, bending, bending. We've flattened out, and then we're able to do the kicktail. Um, you know, were you to cut out that little flat space, that little termination point, um, your veneer would kink in the corners, it would make corners, it might not laminate, uh, you would have delam. Um, you know, lots of things may happen. Uh, that being said, I have seen some guys out there who have done this thing called cereal bowl concave, and that's pretty cool. Uh, it's where they can uh, make a drop deck where they don't terminate the flat space, uh, and it's called cereal bowl because they poured milk and cereal in it and ate from it to prove that uh, they did do the bowl. Um, it's a very advanced technique of bending veneer, um, but if you look out on the internet, I'm sure you'll find uh, maybe not instructions, but inspiration to talk, tackle something like that. Um, so again, if you're, doing, if you're doing multiple bends, right, a board with kicks and concave, make sure you terminate one before you do the other. Finally, we've got our street deck. Um, this one, again, it's a similar to the old school because it's an evolution of the design. Uh, the only difference is that this one is tighter. Uh, the angles on the kicks are very specific, something that's been worked out uh, over the years. Um, the concave is of a certain design and the width is of a certain design. This one we've, we've built so it's specifically for uh, like the younger age, you know, 15, 16, 18 and younger. Um, if you want something larger, well, you gotta make your own mold. That's what these are all about. So I've got two uncut molds. They're both for a street deck, various sizes. 
uh, and they're in uh, various stages of completion. This one just has our lines on it. And so you can see here we've got that very ubiquitous and important center line right there. Right? You can see how we've demarcated where our concave starts on both sides. You can even see that we've done the third dimension as well. You know, we've, we've shaped out uh, the angle of the concave and uh, the depth of where it will end um, with a rasp, a uh, sanding block, uh, a drywall saw. Uh, we can chop those off and uh, as long as we stay inside the line, we've got exactly the, the shape that we're intended, that we want. You also notice here that we've terminated our curves by way of little angled lines. When we shape our board, when we carve it out, we're gonna, you know, we're either gonna not pass that line or we're gonna gradually curve it up to meet the flat at that point. This one here, similar to that. Uh, instead, I do curved termination lines, right? And I've got my truck holes already laid out because this helps me sort of visualize the finished product. Um, I've got a nice itty bitty little kick here, something a little bit bigger but more mellow here. Looks like that's my tail. No, oh, that's my nose. Here we go. I wrote it down. I'm smart. Right, here we go. You write, mark down your board tail and nose so you can remember in the future. Um, this one is my daily rider. Really, really like it. Um, it's very mellow concave. I've got about three inches of flat space in the middle. Uh, and my kicktails, again. Um, a street deck's a very simple design. You know, you, you've, you've seen it a million times when you look up skateboard or you even think skateboard these days. You know, the popsicle stick is what you think of. If that's, uh, if that's what you want to build, very easy. You already know what it looks like. Um, you just got to figure out your dimensions. And again, uh, you know, if you're looking for dimensions, uh, we don't provide specific dimensions for, for doing board design. Uh, we would much prefer if you guys designed your own, uh, came up with the numbers yourself, worked it out. Um, that kind of thing, if you really need the guidance, is published online. Various skate companies publish the dimensions for their boards, the angles of the kicktails, that kind of thing. So uh, if it's necessary, you can go out there and Google it up. Um, but we can help you sort of tackle any problems that you're having with yours. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, the drop deck. Now, let's get into long boards. Long boards are a crazy beast. This is an industry where, uh, you know, the kick flip did not determine how a board looks or how it's shaped or, or how it rides. Uh, this is one where we take the skateboards and we try to apply them to different facets. So, you know, going fast, uh, butt board, you want to sit on your board, there's a style for that. Um, if you want to slide, there's a board for that. If you just want to cruise, there's a board for that. They sort of are built on this shape here in terms of drop decks. Um, these days you find a lot of uh, micro drops, um, some, some drop decks with like radial concave because they'll lock you in. Um, you know, all kinds. You've even got uh, flat boards. Uh, flat boards with cutouts are becoming popular again. Um, so I mean, with a long board, the, the design is it's limitless. But the basics for what you're gonna do, and I'm just gonna show the drop deck because it's got the most complicated ones. Um, it's got some tricks to it. Uh, so let's start with the plat. Uh, so we've got our substrate here. It's just a, what is this? An inch or a quarter inch uh, of uh, MDF, right? Just a flat piece. And we've got a one inch thick piece of foam uh, stuck to the top. Um, the size of the foam will determine how deep the drop is. Um, you, know, you, can, you can build with a one inch piece, right, to make a, a one inch thick drop. If you want to get old school, you could use like a two inch thick piece, right, make a deeper drop. Uh, you want to get super old school, I don't think we've got one on the wall here, but you could use like a three inch piece and make, you know, that old Evo style, like that mega drop. Um, those are crazy. Uh, they're all built the same way. It just, again, you know, the size of your mold will determine how, how big your drop is. Uh, this one again, it's a one inch drop and uh, it's got very simple, mellow concave on both sides. Uh, this is a board designed to sort of uh, cruise mostly, but also allow uh, somebody to, to jump ahead, do some sliding, maybe go fast. Um, it's what we use for our classes to teach uh, like teenagers and younger kids uh, how to design and build a drop deck. So we've got our drop here. And uh, I just want to point something out to everybody. You know, one of the most common misconceptions about a drop deck mold 
so it's very different from from what's already out there but if you think about it it's really quite identical to your basic street deck mold I mean you have your drops right where we to mount this you know on a flat piece of thing we've got our concave that's always there and then we've got our drop now this drops massive and long you wouldn't want to build a board like that but you can see where I'm going with this how you know, this can be your kicktail of a board and so uh, the design elements are all, all, all here, you know, we've got our center line, we have our concave, our, our termination points, right? And then we've got our, our kicktails, or the drop, if you will, uh, for this one. Uh, this drop is about two inches long over the one inch depth. Uh, this allows us uh, to press a drop deck without any external clamping. Now that kind of makes a mellow drop. So you can get a little bit crazier and make what I call a square drop, where it would just be a one inch rise uh, over one inch run. Uh, but that's very tight. Um, that requires specific pressure, which the bag can't do. The bag can only average out pressure uh, over the entire surface. Uh, so a square drop or tighter will require external clamping. And this is where you would grab you know, some wood blocks and you would clamp Outside of the bag, you would you would do the whole lamination like normal, get this in the bag. Uh, but once it's there, you would clamp it to the top and bottom so that you can force that veneer down into that square drop. Once you're finished, you've got something that looks similar to this. Um, you'll always go when you're doing a custom build with a square design. You'll notice that you know I had the pre-shaped ones out as well. Um, those ones we chop up because the veneer that we sell with them is also pre-shaped and so that allows people uh, to just sort of build it. Uh, the idea behind the pre-shaped ones is, is that we've removed the design element completely. So if you're here to do a custom build, get your own ideas out on a board, uh, you're going to be looking at all of our blank uncut stuff. And that's what we'll let you tackle your own ideas, get it out there. Um, last but not least, actually Let's see if I got any questions. All right. So last but not least is a dancer board. Now this is very similar to everything you've seen so far. We've got our concave, we've got our kicktails, we've got our termination points, we've got our center line. Very simple board. It's just a big dancer, right? It's cute. Actually, this is it right here. That's that board there. Now, what I'd like to talk about this one is editing a board. Uh, you've made a mold. You've written it, there's some things you want to change, maybe one of it's the length, maybe one of it's the width, uh, whatever it is, it requires you adding material to your mold versus, you know, normally just shaving off more and more and more. So what this one is, is a splice. Now splicing your molds to extend it, very, very simple, very easy to do. You would start with a blank piece of foam, and you would cut your original foam in half, Slap this new piece of foam in the middle, glue it all together. I glued it up on a little piece of MDF so that it, it stays together. And uh, with it as one solid piece, you can then take a sanding block and just shave it down until they, they, they are flush, until both surfaces meet. All right, and it's nice and consistent. You can see I've duplicated the lines as well. All right, I did that before shaving it down, just so that I've got a visual indicator as well uh, of where I should be shaving it to. Um, but I taped it all up and I added a good 12 inches to my original 48 inch long dancer. Um, and so splicing is something else you could do. This also works down the width of the board. You can chop it right down the middle, add you know, a couple inches of foam right in the middle, shave it down to match any say kicktails you've got or don't if it's just flat and, uh, and you're golden. This is a dancer. The design behind a dancer is very similar to just any other, uh, say like a pintail or a cruiser, maybe like a, you know one of those flexi long boards. Um, the only difference is that it's it's massive, it's hugely long. Dancing boards are there for uh, stability, so that you can jump up, twirl around, do some steps, uh, cross step on that bad boy. Um, so you're gonna want to build it with as much material as possible. Uh, a 48 inch long dancer is a good start. It means you don't have to do any splicing, any editing of the material you're gonna use. So I would suggest doing that if uh, you're doing a first one. Otherwise, uh, go wild. 
right? Pick up a couple two inch molds and make a massive monster of a dancer. Um, at some point, we're gonna do a live show about various techniques that you can do with your veneer, like fixing it, splicing it, um, and we can get into that uh, later. Um, that's really all there is about basic design. Um, if anybody else has any questions for me, if anybody wants to dive into something a little basic about molds, uh, now's the time to do it. Does not mean you can't leave your questions though later and we'll come back to you. Yeah, that's right. We'll, uh, thanks John. We'll, uh, we'll be checking on this just like the last video uh, for the next like week or so and uh, we'll just be trying to answer any questions you have. Um, if you have specific questions about a mold you're trying to make, give me a call. I can help you out over the phone. Uh, check the internet. Uh, there are places like uh, Silverfish Longboarding that, uh, and Reddit has a lot of board design uh, Reddits uh, that you can visit. And uh, ask for inspiration, ask for help, ask for ideas. Um, you know the resources out there. Uh, mold making is, is an old, 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 old practice. Um, you know the techniques, tricks, and, and tools are all out there. Um, actually, on the note of tools um, for shaping a mold, uh, especially a foam mold, you've got a lot of tools handy. You probably already have some at home, uh, which would make this even easier. Uh, you know you can. Sanding block. This one's a piece of wood with some grip tape glued to it. Not even glued. I think we just used the grip tape sticker. Uh, makes a great tool. Uh, we use a Japanese saw or a drywall saw to chop off the meat of, say, kicktails. Uh, you can use a flat rasp or surform scraper that we sell uh, to do, you know, simple little things like the, the corners of, of the concave. Um, and uh, uh, what else? Finally, uh, uh, hot wire is also a, an alternative you can use, uh, although that's a little technically limiting in terms of uh, what you need to know to get started. Um, that's about it, I guess, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Um, visit our website. We've got a lot more tutorials on actually how to apply what I've talked about today. Um, we've got written tutorials with photos and instructions. Um, We've got a big YouTube section as well, lots of videos there. Um, and again, you can reach out to us at rawrocket.com and uh, you know, we'll be happy to help. Uh, this is Marcel signing off and I guess we'll see you in two weeks again.